the rusty duck. Is that a blended body chronomic pupa or maybe it's a shooter? I guess you're gonna have to stick around to find out. Hello everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you've been here before, thanks for dropping by once again. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I provide fly tying and fly fishing content that I hope makes your next day on the water just that little bit more enjoyable. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like. If you enjoy the videos on my channel, please consider subscribing. And if you hit that bell like you'd strike a big fish, you'll get notifications every time I upload a video just like this one. Today we're doing something a little different. I'm joined by Trevor Tatarchuk and I've got him on camera to show you how he ties one of his beautiful blended thread body coronamid pupa patterns. His pupil patterns are works of art. They're almost too good to fish. He's really a creative and innovative tire. Everybody should have the pleasure of watching. We got together this past fall, Trevor, myself, Mike Green, my good buddy Ryan Ermit, and Brent Gill from Wait For It Films to fish the numerous lakes in the Caribou region. We had a great trip and Brent actually caught it on film in a short video called Still. While I was there, I managed to corner Trevor, get him to sit down in front of the camera and show me how he tied his pupa. You're gonna get to watch it now, so let's get at it. All right, first step, I like to place a size 13. Alec Jackson's Phantom Culvert Nymph Hook in the vise. And I put it this way to help me place the bead. So I will be putting on a size 332nd Chronomid Brown brass bead. Remove from the vise and place where you want. I then slide the hook back or the bead back and now tie in the gill material. So the next material I'm going to be using for that is uni stretch. And I remove about a, a one inch piece. Alright, so to tie in the gill material, we'll start by laying down a few thread wraps. The color of your thread isn't important at this point because it's going to be concealed by the bead once it's slid back over. So just use whatever's in your bobbin. Alright, so we'll grab the uni and wrap in to the front of the eye. Now what I like to do is build up bit of a bump in the front here. This will help the material not crowd the hook eye. And then quick whip finish. Remove excess thread. Remove excess gill material and slide back over the hook. And then what I like to do is pull tight about the same depth as the bead. And there's your gill material. So now, to do a blending technique, you want to think about which color you want at the tail and which color you want it to fade into. So you want to start with the material that's going to be visible at the tail. So in this case, I am using UTC7 in wood duck. And I'm going to tie in right behind the bead to catch the thread. The next material we'll be using is a small gold ultra wire for the ribbing. So we'll tie in right behind the bead, catch it in once it's tight. And then just try to follow the hook shank, the profile of the hook shank, all the way down whilst spinning your bobbin counterclockwise to flatten the thread 
and keep that really nice skinny profile that you're looking for in these bugs. Once I get to about the where the barb and the hook is, as you can see here, I lift the wire and I'll lay in a few wraps in behind and then come back over top. Again, touching turns, spinning that thread to keep it flat, and all the way back up to the hook eye. So at this point, we've caught it in, and we can remove this thread. And then I will use my thumbnail at time if there's the wire you find is not following the hook. So at this point you will be now tying in the next color that you're looking to blend. In this case I'm using UTC 70 in a rust brown and tie in right behind the bead. Remove excess Work your way down the shank. Again, this is crucial at this point to try to keep your thread wraps as open and flat as possible. One technique that I like to use is by gently lifting off on the pressure that you apply to the bobbin and it will open up open up the thread and then it's okay if you leave a few open spaces as that color will bleed through and now I start to just build up the profile I'm looking for chronomids have a a slight taper um, so I like to take my time and work on the profile that I'm happy with. Once I'm happy with that, you can again quick quick whip finish to catch the thread and into the bobbin rest. Now we can now we can wrap the ribbing. Looks like we got a little bit of thread caught there. That's okay. Alright. Now I like to use my rotary function uh, for this technique because it really helps me space the ribbing that I'm looking for um, and it's just a, a nice easy way to see what's going on on the other side of the hook so I'm always looking for about six to seven ribs at this point and then we'll catch that in and then we can remove the excess wire Now we're ready to whip finish. And remove excess thread. And there you have it. Now we'll just throw a little bit of UV on there and you'll see this really come to life. And the final step, I like to apply a UV finish in this case. I'm using solar as bone dry and a nice thin coat on the chronomid. Really helps to blend the color and provide that durability and sheen that you're looking for. And then hit that with light.
And there you have it. A simple yet effective blended chronomet. Hope you enjoyed it.